So in this video we're going to look at how to make a stitched textile postcard like this and I've used variegated thread but you can use whatever fabric and thread you've got to hand. Okay so I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process for how I make this stitched postcard. So what I'm going to use is um, a rotary cutter, a cutter mat and a ruler for um, cutting out the front of this, the front of your stitched postcard. Um, I've also got some Vlieseline bonder web um, which is you can use a double-sided interfacing as well that'd work um, I really like the bond web and then if you're using bond web also use baking parchment because that stops it sticking to your iron or your ironing board um, I've got some 160 GSM card which will be the back of your postcard an old pair of scissors that I'm going to use to cut out the card when I trim it down and a pen gusman thread for stitching it all together and then some wadding which we use to make the sandwich for the stitched um, stitch postcard and again this works really well if you've kind of got off cuts from making a quilt or something then you can just use up those off cuts and I'll come back to each of these products as and when we use them and I'll show you how I use them to make this but I'm gonna start off by showing you how I cut the fabric for the stitch postcard okay so you want to make sure that whatever fabric you're using you want to make sure that it's pressed really well so it lies flat. I'm going to use this one because there are some flowers on here that I really really like so I wanted to kind of centre them on the postcard. So we're going to cut it to um, 5 inches by 7 inches and then I'll trim it down afterwards. So I'm just going to look at roughly where I'd want it to be. So if I measure the 5 inches across this flower then sits kind of really squarely in there and then if I cut it around about there so I can see that's roughly seven inches by there and I'll just start trimming it. You want to make sure your hand is lying flat on there and keep all your fingers away from the rotary cutter and then I'm just gonna cut through, move that bit and just turn it round to finish trimming it down. And you can do this, um, so like I'm cutting this fabric specifically from a whole piece but if you've got um, any fabric pieces left over off cuts or extras then you can kind of piece together your own five by seven inch thing and it doesn't have to be five by seven that's just the way that I'm doing it for this so I'll just trim this all down and then once you've cut that out you've got your five by seven inch piece of fabric which will be the front of your textile postcard and then if you wanted to piece together fabric extras that you've got it might be from a project you've already been working on or leftovers from something special then you can piece that together and then just trim it down till it measures five by seven like I have with this and then you want to cut the wadding out and I would cut it ever so slightly bigger. So we cut the fabric to five by seven and I'll put all these measurements up online as well so you can see it. I'm just gonna cut this um, six by eight. So I'll trim it here. And that's because you want it just a little bit bigger. Um, just gives you something to hold on to as you're quilting it. Just kind of makes it easier to do. So once that's trimmed, you are ready to start quilting it. So I tend I tend not to baste it onto here to be honest. It's such a small small piece that you can kinda I just push give it a really good push onto the wadding and then you can quilt it using whatever method you want to. I quite like doing straight lines or you could hand quilt it. Um so yeah so have a go at the quilting see kind of how you prefer to do it. Okay, so the other tip I would say is to make sure you've got a walking foot on your machine. This helps to make sure um, the multiple layers are fed through nice and evenly. I'll just lock that so it won't keep going in and out of focus. Um, I'm going to use a variegated thread because it means I don't have to do any special quilting. I can just do straight lines and the thread will do different options. And the other thing is I want to say I haven't made the sandwich that you would do when you make a quilt. I've literally just got this fabric which is going to be the front of the postcard and then I've got the wadding underneath and then I'm just going to go ahead and quilt it and I'm not going to worry about um, starting and stopping my thread 
or securing it because you're going to trim it all down and then um, do a really tight zigzag to kind of hold it all into place. So I'll just start here and I'll just start by lowering the needle in and then I'm just going to go ahead and stitch my first line and then just going to go slightly off the edge of the fabric and then take the needle out, cut it and let me see if I can get it in. So I've got the first line of quilting and I'm just going to keep working my way all the way across here until all the stitching, all the quilting is done to hold this fabric to the wadding. Okay, so once it's all quilted, and you can see here how I did um, a cross hatch, so I did diagonal lines going that way and then diagonal lines going that way. And obviously I've got a lot of thread out now that I need to trim down. You can also, I just wanted to show it if you did, I just did straight lines, and let me get that back in focus. I just did straight lines on this one and I didn't do too many and that can look just as effective. So this one's trimmed down to 6x4 and now I'm going to trim this one down to 6x4. So in the same way that we did before, you're just going to trim the edges off. And this is why it doesn't matter that you didn't secure your thread because you're going to be trimming it down anyway. So I'll just cut these edges off. And then you want it to be four inches across and then trim it down to six inches okay so you have chosen your fabric You've quilted it with the wadding on the back, got that bit sorted. You've now trimmed it down six inches by four inches. So now it's time to use the bundle web. So again, you're going to want to cut this bundle web out so it's the same size. You don't want it to be too much bigger because obviously it's, it might stick, stick to things. Well, it won't do because we'll cover it. But um, this way I use an old pair of scissors and I just trim all the way around. I'm probably doing maybe an extra millimetre or two and that's just to make sure um, like if I end up moving it ever so slightly as I'm ironing it, it's still going to be alright. So, that's your bund web and now we're going to iron it on. Okay, so bund web is um, an iron-on adhesive which means it will adhere on both sides. So it's, um, let's see if I can take it off. There's a web, and you can see it here, that's a really thin web and it's got glue adhesive on either side. Don't take this backing bit off yet, so you should be able to feel there's a rough side and a smooth side. So the smooth side is like the protective paper and the rough side is the adhesive. So what I'm going to do is, I've got the glue side, the rough side, the adhesive sticking up and I'm going to lay this on top because I want it to adhere to the back of my postcard. And then I'm going to put it in some baking parchment and this protects your iron, it protects your ironing board, it stops anything from sticking to it that shouldn't be sticking to it. And I've got, I'm just going to place it in there and I made it, um, you want to use baking parchment not grease proof because grease proof won't work for this. And then I'm just going to fold it over so it's kind of made a sandwich and trapped it in there. And then I've got a really hot iron and I'm just going to hold it on and count to five and then hold it on the other side and count to five. And the reason I'm not moving the iron, in, moving the iron back and forth is because I don't want to move, move the paper around or move the fabric around, move the web around. So once you've held it on, you need to let it cool before you do anything next with it. Um, if you try to take it out too soon, then the adhesive kind of won't won't work. Right, so I've pressed that, and whilst it cools, this is when you can write your postcard. So, it's got a piece of paper, and because we trimmed it down to six by four, 
um, you can then just write your message on the back as you would do. I always find it easier to write on the paper before you stick it onto the postcard. Um, do you know, I just find it easier to write. I would also leave a half an inch border clear all the way around because you're going to do a zigzag stitch, um, which will just encase all your edges. Um, and what's the thing? Yeah, I probably wouldn't put the address on the back too, just because I'd want to protect the front stitch bit of the postcard. So I'd probably just write it as a whole postcard on the back and then put it in an envelope with the address on. So once, once this is cooled and you finish writing on the back of your postcard, and then going to you can see it's stuck to the baking parchment, and that's absolutely fine because what we're going to do is we're then just going to ease it off here. And that's where the joy of it really comes because it's baking parchment it does just ease off from it and just gets back into focus okay so now you want to do is take off this smooth side of the bundle head. move that baking parchment out of the way so if the smooth side of the bundle web doesn't come off very easily then i would just whack it back under the iron again in the baking parchment and then as you're peeling it away, just do it slowly, and you can kind of see this should now be smooth on both sides, um, this paper bit, because essentially you've now put the adhesive onto the back of your piece. So you can see here how I've just got a little bit of this web all the way around. So that is where you use your old scissors and just trim it down before we stick the writing onto your card. And actually I'm just going to cut it on top of the paper because otherwise I'm cutting adhesive onto there. So you just go all the way around and just trim off any of that excess webbing that's sticking on the outside. And then once you've done that you're ready to stick the paper onto it. Okay so you're going to put it back in the baking parchment. Um, so this has the other part of the adhesive onto it now. And then the postcard that you've cut out, you're going to place that onto the back. You can imagine that this bit has the writing on, but I know I haven't written on mine yet. Um, and try and line it up as best as you can. In exactly the same way as you did before, you're then going to encase it in the baking parchment and then go back to the iron and just hold it on. I'll probably do it for around about five to ten seconds. Um, I can have mixed success with this or varying times so kind of find what works for you. You can kind of feel if it doesn't stick to it very well then you can obviously do it for a little bit longer. And I'm actually just going to flip it over and iron it on that side as well just so I can make sure it really has bonded all the way through. And again you really want to leave that to cool. before you start to add the stitching on. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool. And then once that's cooled, take it out. And you should be able to feel whether that's stuck or not. Um, and as you can see, my edges of the card are ever slightly bigger than the postcard. So what I'm going to do is just trim that down. So I also keep an old rotary cutter as well as the old pair of scissors and that's just for projects like this if I want to cut through card or cut through you know, anything that isn't fabric related. So I'm just going to do it ever so slightly smaller now than the 4x6 just to make sure all the edges are nice and straight. And then once you've done that and trimmed it all down you are really really close to being finished so oh I think I just moved it then so you just want to bind the edges now so let me take it over to the sewing machine I'll show you how we do it so I've still got the walking foot on um, and that's because I want it to feed the multiple layers through evenly as we go through the stitch postcard I've actually got um, a fairly old needle I mean it's still sharp but because it's going through this cardstock as well I don't want to use a brand new needle just because I don't want to blunt it. And then we're going to use a really, really tight zigzag stitch. So these offcuts that you kept from when we trimmed it down earlier, I've got it on a zigzag stitch. I've put my stitch width at 3.4 and my stitch length at 0 0.6. And then I'd really recommend just doing a test piece to see kind of how wide your zigzag is. 
So I'll just hold that to show you. So it's really, let's see if I can get that in there. So I'm doing a really tight zigzag here. Um, and then that's going to bind all your edges together. If I can get that in focus, sorry. And that's going to bind all your edges on your postcard together. So once you've got the stitch to the right length and width that works for you, you want to make sure that your needle is on. Hold on. This is doing that starting knot. Right. So you want to make sure that your needle is going to be on the right hand side of the zigzag. And I'm actually going to stitch from the front here and lower your foot. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this actually. Okay, so I've got my needle on the right hand side and it's literally right on the edge. So I am going off the edge, but so that it is side by side. So it will, it's kind of butting right up against this. And then I'm just going to start doing the zigzag all the way around. And because it's quite a narrow and tight, um, tight zigzag, it might take a while. So you're just going to keep doing this and make sure that the needle goes from butting up against the outer edge of your postcard, right so it's on the postcard. So you're kind of getting that back and forth to kind of hold it into place. And then once you've gone all the way around, you then go round for a second time. So you're going to do two rounds of stitch. I wanted to show when you get to a corner. So I'm then just going to hand wind. And you want to make sure that you're on the right hand side. Remember how we started off on the right hand side just butting up. So you want to be literally right on that very, very, very edge of the corner. Lift your foot up. And then just turn it around. And yes, you can see my pace card moved. But that's all right because I'm kind of gonna line it straight back up and butt it up and then you just continue sewing again and then because it's going to go to the left that's then going to secure that edge where we may have just moved it and then just keep going all the way around back to the start. When you get back to the bit where you started you just want to take some more stitches about two inches past where you started And that's just going to trap those threads in. Um, if you want to go do some of those back stitches, you can. That just secures it. And then once it's done, lift your needle up, lift the foot up and trim your threads. And then once it's out the machine, you might have some loose threads hanging off. So you just want to go through and trim these loose threads off. And you've done so many tight stitches, it's not really going to come undone or anything like that uh, and then that is your textile postcard completed